Steve Ryder here, my selections on the final day of the Cheltenham 2021 festival. In the 120, the triumph hurdle, my selection is Quilixios at 11 to 4. The Irish domination this week has resulted in both Zanahir and Quilixios both shortening at the top of the market for this race. The favourite is unbeaten so far in his career over hurdles, but hasn't been seen since an impressive victory at Christmas, and therefore preference goes to the, his ex stablemate Quilixios. The Chivoli Park owned gelding is unbeaten on all four starts in his career including when an impressive winner of the Grade 1 Spring Juvenile at the Dublin Racing Festival last month. He had previously won two-week contests, but looked better than ever when returning from a near 100-day break. He cruised throughout that race, before seemingly running out of puff late on, but Gordon Elliott would have no doubt left something to work on in preparation for this race. He since moved to the Henry de Bromhead stable, but that hasn't seemed to hinder others, and he looks to value play against the favourite. At 155, we have the County Hurdle, and my selection is Cade Boyer, 18 to 1. Owner JP McManus won this race last season with the unexposed St. Moir, and I feel similarities can be drawn to his main contender this year. The six year old Gelding has only had five runs over hurdles so far in his career, and he's yet to finish out the first two. He won a competitive handicap hurdle at Down Royal in October under Mark Walsh before catching the eye behind the Charles Burns trained advance Virgo last time at Fairy House. One interesting trend that only Cade Boy and Global Citizen meet this year is that the last five winners of this race haven't ran since the 1st of January prior to the festival. In theory, connections need to get a mark they believe is lenient for their horse and put them away until the big day. Cade Boy was given an extra £4 by the UK handicapper, which is fair, and I expect the eye to be drawn to Mark Walsh throughout the race in the same hat silk worn last year by St. Moir. At 2.30, we have the Albert Barland Novices Hurdle, where my selection is Statler at 11-2. Willie Mullins has won this race twice in recent years with Penhill and Monkfish, and I feel he should be able to win it again this year with Statler. Owner Ronnie Barler has already tasted success at the festival this year with Galvin in the National Hunt Chase, and I feel Statler should have a fantastic chance. It's no surprise that he found bumpers over two miles, too much of a speed test earlier on in his career, and looks in need of this step up to three miles when finishing third over two mile six at the Dublin Racing Festival last time. The form of that run has been boosted with Gaia de Manil running well in the Ballymore Novices Hurdle on Wednesday and his main market rival for the race, Fakira, was a further two lengths behind him last time. The main danger could come from the Gigginstown House stud owned Tory Graf in first time cheap pieces, but Stadler, Stadler looks the much more dependable horse and should be at least involved in the finish. The highlight of the Friday comes at 3.05 as the Cheltenham Gold Cup when my selection is Champ at 6-1. It looks a strong renewal this year with the hat-trick seeking album photo meets, meeting a mix of second season chasers and unexposed seven-year-olds. The Willie Mullins star has won the last two renewals on good to soft ground and has had the identical preparation for this with a victory at Tremor on New Year's Day. He did only win by a neck last year though and I rate the new dangers of a Plutard, Champ and Manella Rindo a greater than Santini and Lost in Translation. Champ has had an unorthodox preparation for this with only one run and that run coming over two miles in the Game Spirit Chase at Newbury last month. He split the champion chase fourth and fifth that day and jumped the best he ever has done when finishing second by only two lengths. He stayed on extremely well in the RSA chase last season to defeat Manella Rindo and Ryanair chase winner Alaho which would give encouragement about him staying the extra trip in the Gold Cup. Nico de Boinville has chosen to ride the JP McManus runner over last year's runner-up Santini, and he should run well if jumping, as well as he did last time. At 3.40, we have the Fox Hunters Chase, where my selection is Bill Away at 3-1. to one. It is a shame that amateur jockeys cannot ride in the contest this year, as Patrick Mullins has developed a good relationship with the selection. He was a well-backed 11-4 to four favourite in the race last year, but just found the more experienced it came to pass too good, having made a couple of mistakes during the race. Unlike last year's winner, Billaway has been in good form this season, winning at Down Royal in December, before defeating the re-opposing Staker Wallace at Nace in January. The return to good to soft ground will give encouragement to backers of it came to pass, but given the concern about his recent form, I much prefer the chances of the William Islands trained Billaway. Paul Townend deputises on the nine-year-old, and hopefully he can go one better than last year. At 4.15, we have the first running of the Mrs. Paddy Power Mayor's Chase, where my selection is Cabaret Queen at 40 to 1. With doubts about many of the runners on the faster ground, I think it might be worth taking a chance on the Willie Mullins trained mare. She's ridden by rider of the moment, Rachel Blackmore, and I expect her to get an uncontested lead in this relatively small field. 
She won the Kerry National earlier this season from the front on soft ground before disappointing on heavy ground on a previous three starts. With ground concerns for Cole Reavy, Shattered Love and Sal Sueta, and a trip concern for Grand National runner-up, Magic of Light, I feel a chance is worth taking on Cabaret Queen to hit the frame at big odds. The final race of the 2021 Cheltenham Festival comes at 4.50 and it's the Martin Pipe Handicap Hurdle and my selection is Eglantine de Soy at 33 to 1. It's always fiercely competitive, but I'm hoping the mayor can further enhance the impressive record of mayors at the festival this year. Trainer Paul Nichols has won this twice in the last eight years and she looks the stable first string under Brian Carver. She won the Mayor's Novices Hurdle in 2019 when defeating Concertista to buy a nose when trained by Willie Mullins and has shown some good form for Paul Nichols so far this season. The seven-year-old finished second over this course and distance in December off a mark of 143 and runs here off exactly the same mark. She went on to finish third behind Roxana and Magic of Light in a grade two at Ascot before disappointing on heavy ground at Warwick last time. The return to a faster surface will definitely suit her and she's interesting off joint top 